Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhousefamboon.com. I'm going to attempt to do another vlog style what we eat in a week, which means there could be a lot of noise. So I'm gonna jump in on day one, this is today. I am making something that I came up with the other day, um, cast iron sourdough pizza crusts. This is a way to do it really fast because with my other way, you have to preheat the stone in the oven. I really discovered it because I wanted to make several little pizzas one day and I only had enough oven space for two. And so I made my crust this way. Essentially, you just preheat the cast iron skillet. Add sourdough starter. And then it will instantly cook it if the skillet's free enough. And I put a little bit of olive oil and salt, maybe some fresh or dried herbs. I have some from the garden. Then I'm just gonna top it with sauce, cheese, whatever toppings, and then pop it in the oven for the cheese to melt. We have gymnastics in town tonight, so this is like my really fast way to get the kids some pizza. Now, of course, you can also just bake them right in the skillet. I'm gonna try to fit a few onto this. So I'm gonna do a few on my pizza stone and then maybe one in the skillet. It's also a really good way if you wanna make like mini pizzas, you can do it, you can do that as well. And today I used um, spelt sourdough starter. So I yeah. freshly ground some spelt in my mill. I think we're just gonna do herbs, sauce, and cheese because Eli and I need to go to the grocery store while we're in town. We have hardly any groceries, so that's gonna have to happen. You know what I'm gonna do for me and daddy? You know what I'm gonna do for me and daddy? What? I'm going to do a fig spread, cheddar, and then we'll grab a jalapeno from the garden. Yes, that'll be good. You go add cheese while I get a jalapeno, okay? Cheese into my, into my cheese crisp. So add the, the cheese. I'm making an instant mess. By a little bit, I mean a lot of it. These little pizzas are really great for summer for a few reasons. One is you don't have to run the oven quite as long as you do with my other pizzas. Actually, just a few minutes versus, you know, it'll really heat up the house. And then also, you can make personal style. So if one of your kids doesn't like a certain something, like my kids don't really like what I'm about to do here, and that is add fig spread to a pizza for me. So that's really fun. And then also you can add whatever summer veggies are available. So if you go to the farmer's market and there's a bunch of peppers or fresh tomatoes, which there's gonna be soon, ours are all still yellow. You can of course just make like garden surprise pizza. I'm gonna put Swiss chard here on one of the cheese ones. And then I'm gonna put a jalapeno and cheddar here on the fig spread ones. So Whatever is seasonally available, just slap it on a stove top pizza crust. It's really, really fast. And pop it in the oven for a few minutes and then that can be dinner or lunch. Also, we discovered that if you make these really thin and you don't cook them very long, like you don't make them crispy, they're quite pliable and they make good wraps. So yes, tortillas are great, they're delicious, but they are a little bit more time consuming because you have to put together a whole dough and roll it out. These are literally, literally just sourdough starter on a skillet. And you can use it in so many ways. You could add different herbs or seasonings to make it one way. Of course, add some salt so that they're flavorful. And then the flavor of the sourdough is really good. It's a quick little vessel for whether it be a wrap or a pizza. Perfect. Today I'm gonna do one of my favorite easy meals, and that is chicken thighs, and sweet potatoes. I love this because I can get it in the oven and then go about what I'm doing, other things, and it's it's probably about as easy as throwing in a pizza, but obviously the results are a lot healthier. I just put coconut oil on the chicken thighs. Put a little bit on and then I like to rub it around with my fingers to make sure everything gets 
nice and oily. You can rinse your chicken, but then if you do that, make sure to pat it dry because it will get crispier as long as it's nice and dry. I like to make sure to have plenty on all the skin, mostly. Wash your hands in between, obviously. And then I just like to add salt and then whatever herbs are in the garden. I picked a big basket of herbs yesterday for our pizzas. So I'm just going to chop them all up. I have basil, parsley, thyme, oregano, rosemary, a whole bunch of different herbs. Whatever you have is wonderful. I won't really use quite this many. Then I'm just gonna put it in the oven on 350. We have several hours till mealtime. I'm just getting things going early. I like to do that. And I'm gonna put these on the bottom rack and then sweet potatoes on the top rack. And then about halfway through cooking, so an hour-ish from now, I'm going to add this. We are addicted to all things Date Lady. If you didn't listen, she's a fellow homeschool mom and she lives in Missouri, so we just had fun chatting. And it is a naturally sweetened barbecue sauce, so I find that to be really good. I just went out to the garden and gathered some tomatoes. We have some cherry tomatoes, some potatoes, peppers, onions, zucchini, parsley. I'm going to make what I call farmer's market or garden soup. The key is to just put in every vegetable that you can get easily right now in season at the farmer's market. We don't have carrots ready, so I'm just gonna throw in some Carrots not from our garden, some garlic, more onions, maybe a few more red tomatoes. And then I'm going to cook up some venison, some ground venison, and cook this in my homemade bone broth. make homemade bone broth, you want to see gel when it goes in the fridge. I have a tutorial here on my channel that I will link in the description you can check out. I prefer to add the meat back in when the potatoes are soft, everything cooks through. I find that the meat's better when it's not cooked in broth. I also add the parsley toward the end as well. I'm going to shred up some of my raw cheese from Azure Standard. I've talked about this before, I will link it down in the description box, but this is the raw cheese. It's the best deal that I found on raw cheese. I order it and get it shipped to my house, actually. Last time I ordered, I ordered two big blocks of it because it will last a while and we go through it. So I'm going to serve this up, add some shredded cheese, a little bit of sour cream, and it'll be good to go. I get asked a lot what Daniel eats for dinner. He just eats whatever we're eating. So today he's gonna have a little meat, little potatoes, little zucchini, carrots, tiny bits of cheese. We're having soup. 
pretty much anything that we eat, I'll just give it in tiny portions yeah, to Daniel. Tiny. And he's very, very into food. He likes it all. Don't you, buddy? I know he nurses a lot, but he also but likes food. A lot of it makes it on the floor, though. Like zucchini and onions. <laughs> I did einkorn, freshly ground einkorn flour, which I'll do four cups of flour and four eggs. For a few minutes while I prepare a few other things. I'm gonna slice up some mushrooms and saute those and allow the chicken to finish. Tomorrow we are going to be out of the house all day. In the morning, we are going to pick elderflowers at a local farm. We're also gonna go meet up with my sister at the state park, and then we have a rehearsal for a wedding. So I wanna make up some sandwiches for lunch. To do that, I am making my sourdough einkorn bread. This is my new favorite bread. I know I said this about the sourdough artisan bread, but I like this even more, not exactly because of the taste, but because it is really easy, it's no need, it's made with freshly milled einkorn, and so it meets all of my health requirements. So to make it, I just am combining five cups of freshly milled einkorn flour, one cup of starter, one cup of water, and a teaspoon and a half of salt. I've made this so many times that the recipe is just memorized. You can make it in a preheated, cast iron Dutch oven like I did in my artisan bread video, but you can also just put it in regular loaf pans, let it rise. I find this a little bit easier because I don't have to do the preheating part. So it's my favorite go-to every day, just general bread. For today's meal, I'm going to use a bunch of the zucchini from my garden to make zucchini lasagna. This is a good way to use up zucchini kids don't really notice that it isn't actually noodles. As usual, I cook venison, drawn venison up with onions and garlic and salt. It's my go-to way to flavor it. Tastes delicious.
just alternating between layers of the ricotta and zucchini and sauce and all of that and mozzarella cheese. Um, this is just the usual way of making lasagna, only with zucchini as noodles. I'm just going to pop this in a 400 degree oven. For the full recipe, you can visit the blog farmhouseonmoon.com. My einkorn bread is doubled in size. It just takes a few hours. It depends on how warm your kitchen is right now. Mine's pretty warm, so it's pretty quick, but it could take a little longer if it's cold. So I'm gonna throw this in with my zucchini lasagna. Okay, today I'm going to be making a chicken risotto. Again, I make this all the time. The reason is it's hard to use up homemade bone broth in the summer. I mean, we do eat soup, but it's not my favorite thing or anybody else's. So it's a great way to use up some broth. Also, I have lots of these boneless, skinless chicken breasts from my pastured chicken order. So it's one of those things I almost always have the ingredients to make, and so it's a standby. Doing about two cups of rice and a quart of bone broth. You can see it's gelled up in the refrigerator, but it'll go to liquid as I cook it. Well, thank you so much for following along with what we ate this week. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Also, if you have not yet checked out my podcast, you can find that on any of the podcast players. Just search Simple Farmhouse Life. I am over 50 episodes in. So if you're new to that, you have a lot of catching up to do. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.